So, is this an unpopular opinion? I don't even know if this is an argument people have. What I do believe, though, is that it's true. Diddy Kong Racing is absolutely better than Mario Kart 64. Upon reading the title of this video, I speculate that most people think one of two things. Okay, let's see. Diddy Kong Racing is better than Mario Kart 64. What? No, it's not. Who cares? Both games are old as shit. That much is true. They are pretty old games. There's that degree of nostalgia to consider when critiquing them, versus how good they actually are. Nostalgia isn't the whole picture though. There are a number of other factors in play, and those are what we're here to comb through. I'll hopefully be keeping the bias to a minimum, as I'd rather focus on what worked and didn't work for each game. To clarify, I like both games, I just strongly prefer Diddy Kong Racing. Alright, let's dive in. I'll start with what I consider to be the most obvious point of advantage to disadvantage between these games, the 3D modeling. Neither Mario Kart nor Diddy Kong Racing are 100% 3D. A lot of N64 games utilize 2D sprites for smaller details like backgrounds or items for efficiency reasons. In Mario Kart, all of the character models are 2D sprites, but in Diddy Kong, aside from their tires, they're 3D. I think this has a significant impact on the immersion. The 3D on 3D make the characters fit into the environments a lot better. I'm sure some people don't find this to be a big deal, but in my case, it's the first thing I think about. Diddy Kong Racing is just a little bit faster, or at least seems a little faster. I mean it definitely is in a literal sense because Mario Kart races are much longer. You can really feel the boosting in Diddy Kong. Your character gets thrown back into their seat and you gain a ton of speed, even if only briefly. If you let go of the gas when you use a boost, it looks different and lasts longer too. Mario Kart boosts do make you go faster. The action of it though is kind of lacking. This comparison is also being done on 150cc, since it's the only way to be as fair as possible. Diddy Kong only has one program speed setting. Rubber Band AI is a serious problem in Mario Kart. It's not the correct way to go about increasing the game's difficulty. If you pay close attention to when you hit an enemy off screen, you can see on the minimap that they don't take nearly as long to recover from an attack as you do. In addition to that, even if you're drift boosting constantly or using mushrooms, there's always at least one computer player who can keep up with you because the game is programmed to negate your skill. There is something so satisfying about lapping your opponent. It's great. I like that Mario Kart is a generally harder game. It's just harder in the wrong way, if that makes sense. I'd prefer it if the enemies got smarter with the items, or instead started drifting to catch up. Speaking of items, let's look at the item systems for each game. In Mario Kart, you've got one shell or three shells, heat seeking and non, one mushroom or three mushrooms for boosting, a decoy item block, a gold mushroom for infinite boosts within the time limit, a star for invincibility slash running opponents off the road, one banana or five bananas for slipping on, boo to steal an item at random, a blue shell to target the racer in first place, and a lightning bolt to temporarily shrink and slow all other racers. In Diddy Kong, you have missiles, which work like shells, boosts, shields, road hazards, and magnets. I ran through those a little quicker because the mechanics aren't as straightforward. The question mark blocks in Mario Kart all contain every possible item, which is chosen at random and is sometimes influenced by your position in the race. Diddy Kong items are contained within color-coded balloons, if you hit a blue balloon, you acquire a boost, 100% of the time. You can also stack any of the same color balloon up to three times to amplify the item it contains. Red balloons are missiles. Getting a second red balloon gives you a heat-seeking missile. Getting a third gives you ten regular missiles. Green balloons turn from oil slicks to mines to bubbles, each slowing you down worse than its predecessor. I say the Diddy Kong system allows for far more strategy in your competition for first place. You don't get punished for being ahead, you can focus on boosting, and if you're trying to catch the guy in front, you can focus on offense. There's no shooting backwards though. 
Story mode. Mario Kart 64 doesn't have a story. I'm not saying that it should, it's just a racing game, but having a story gives you antagonists. Where Mario has different cups, Diddy has different worlds. Both have a four race structure, but the worlds have boss races and the cups don't. This mixes things up a bit, because not only are your boss opponents unique racers, but they have unique race tracks. A few of them are linear too, one of them being the final boss's course. Yeah, there's a final boss. His name is Whizpig, and you race him twice. I think having the story makes single player significantly more enjoyable. In Mario Kart games in general, I find that I'm just trying to increase my lap times when I play by myself. The saving the day aspect in Diddy Kong Racing is just nice to have, and adds to the sense of accomplishment. Where Mario Kart has mirror mode, Diddy Kong has 8 coins. After you beat a boss race, you get to do the 4 races in that world again, with the added challenge of collecting 8 coins per race. It's a creative way to up the difficulty, and some of the coins have you going pretty damn far out of your way just to grab them. Additionally, this game has mirror mode as well, in its own version of New Game Plus. Counting the boss races, the 5 worlds and secondary final boss race total up to 26 tracks to Mario Kart 16. There's a valid argument for quality over quantity though. While most of the races in DKR make for good times, there are a few shitty tracks. The innovation was pushed further with the inclusion of multiple vehicles. Once you've beaten any given race for the first time in its default vehicle, you open up the option to race in something else on that course. I'll just say it, the hovercraft is a piece of shit. I always find myself dreading the water races when I know they're coming up. Thankfully there aren't too many. It controls like complete ass and you're just all over the place. Moving on. I could take it or leave it as far as comparing the battle modes, but I still think Diddy Kong has more to offer. Each world had a different free-for-all battle map. The first one had you collecting eggs while preventing the opponents from stealing them, the second and third are both similar to Mario Kart where you can only take so many hits, and the fourth is a banana collecting competition. As a kid, I spent more time playing Mario Kart's battle mode than I did playing Diddy's, but in both games I primarily stuck to racing. If I keep trying to find things to compare for much longer, it'll turn into nitpicking, so I'll end with my personal favorite thing about the game, and that's the soundtrack. David Wise, the legend behind most of the Donkey Kong Country music, is the composer for this game, and I say that Diddy Kong Racing's soundtrack blows Mario Kart 64's out of the water. The sound font is so easy on the ears, and the game's overall upbeat tone is emphasized by the upbeat music. It's also catchy, and the tracks are themed to the world that they're in. You get the deserty vibe, the wintry vibe, the tropical vibe, the foresty vibe, and the space vibe. It's so good. It's so good. I don't hate the soundtrack in Mario Kart 64. I find that the music fits the game just fine. I just don't care much for that sound font, I guess. <sighs> My argument is more or less summed up here. I had fun growing up with both of these titles, despite how it may seem. After all, this was the real focus of the video. It goes without say that you don't have to agree. But, if you're still here with me now, then you must at least be curious what I think. So, thank you for your interest. Honestly, I could go on and on. I like that there's an overworld. I like that there are secrets in some of the races. I like that there are cheat codes you can enter. I like that the game is happy and lighthearted. I like that there are a couple of unlockable characters. I like Diddy Kong Racing. Can you tell?